Last Friday, lead PvP designer Brian Holinka took a break from lifting weights and buffing Death Knights to provide us a rare interview. Although this was a delightful treat for the community, especially after a long drought of PvP dev communication, it left a lot to be desired. The biggest elephant in the room is that PvP activity is at an all-time low, and we are definitely in a crisis. The PvP community has concerns, and the WoW devs need to take them seriously. In today's video, we will be breaking down the conversation between Holinka and Venruki, going over what Holinka got wrong, and to his credit, what he actually got right. And as always, we have a quick question for you. We know there have been some huge changes suggested by the community, including a solo queue bracket, or even just a revamped LFG system. What do you think is the most important change that WoW needs right now? Maybe you have some wild ideas and we want to hear them, so let us know what you think the devs need to be doing in the comments below. But before we get into it, Season 1 of TBC and Patch 9.1 in Shadowlands are right around the corner, and if you're looking for some guides to get you started, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash WoW. We have been adding lots of TBC content lately, giving you the information you need to damage or heal just like the pros. Our guides break down how to play your class and have secret tips and tricks that only the best players know. And with the release of patch 9.1, we will be adding tons of content for the new patch, giving you a head start on the competition once the new season launches. So if you want to dominate the competition, be sure to check out skillcap.com slash wow today. Let's start off at the end of the interview with something Holinka got kind of wrong when it comes to offensive cooldowns. Generally, I would prefer we could get into a world where like, you know, every class only has one two to three minute cooldown uh, as yeah. an option. Um, and there isn't a lot of stacking. I mean, for what it's worth, I don't think we're that far off from that right now. But there's also things like, you know, a trinket. Or you know, um, Conduit. Uh, a soul bind uh, bonus, or something like that, out of that sort of thing. But here is exactly where this is a bit misleading. Damage modifiers are at an all-time high, especially for some specs like Ret Paladins, who can deal unhealable damage with just a few globals. When a Ret Paladin kills you, it's not just because they popped wings. It's because they used Seraphim, then popped wings, and they're on use PvP trinket, and then press Divine Toll, which might proc multiple hits with the Ringing Clarity Conduit. And if they're playing with a Necrolord Warrior, they might have even more mastery with Conqueror's Banner, and all of this might be further increased by Dark Archangel if they're playing with a priest as well. Phew, that was exhausting. The point is that cooldown stacking is alive and well, and central to how a lot of classes and specs work in PvP. Some comps like RMP are designed around damage modifiers on offensive cooldowns. Without cooldown stacking, they simply cannot win. This makes Arena have these crazy intense moments where both teams are trading every cooldown possible into each other, only to be followed by 20 seconds of waiting around before DRs and cooldowns are back up. The strength of offensive CDs has created an arms race with strength of passive defense, which is something Holinka understands as a big problem. Right now, some of the biggest culprits for this are Triune Ward for Mages, Defensive Stance for Warriors, Well-Honed Instincts for Druids, and things like Ooze's Frictionless Coding for Necrolord players. All of these abilities combined with the strength of off healing make it seem like you need the stars to align in order to land kills. It's not enough to just CC a healer. Instead, you need a frame perfect cross CC combined with offensive cooldown stacking and an optimal damage rotation to even have a chance at landing a kill. And that's if your opponents don't have a single defensive cooldown. I'm definitely worried about that. And I, I think I should also address for the hybrid healing I th and for this problem that you're talking about now, we, we will. Um, mostly lean on uh, malting them down. So, you know, making PVP specific uh, reductions to them okay. um, that really only apply in PVP. And yeah, we just, we're gonna do it. The combination of off healing and passive defenses leads to some ridiculous consequences like this clip where a DK pops all CDs and does 5K DPS for 10 straight seconds before breaking through the flesh craft of both feral druids. And even when the shield breaks, the remainder of the game will involve both feral druids proccing their shields and healing each other until the shaman goes oom. And besides passive defense, hybrid healing is definitely another contributing factor to this cooldown based meta with some DPS specs being huge outliers when it comes to off healing. Right now, specs like Feral Druid, Enhancement Shaman, and Ret Paladin are doing insane off healing, sometimes healing as much as their healer in 3v3. It is hard to point fingers at who has the best off healing, but the fact that Double Feral Druid can bring games into deep dampening in twos should indicate that there might be an off healing problem. Holinka briefly addressed this issue, saying that hybrid heals are definitely being looked at. That's a problem. So yeah, we I think we are going to look at that over the next uh, few weeks. Um, we talked about 
off um, off healing and uh, we terrain it in. So, yep, that is definitely something we're working at and definitely something I'm concerned about. I think in general, like I said, um, and I, I, I just say it to uh, the team all the time, like people got to die. He finished off this concern by saying that he wants the game to be more lethal, if anything else. Um, yep, that's we're going to continue to keep trying to drive the game towards le lethality and towards people dying. So, um, you know, spells on healers, spells on off, uh, on uh, hybrids, all that is something we're going to keep looking at. Maybe the increased healing reduction effects in 9.1 will help alleviate some of these issues, but the combination of offensive cooldown stacking, passive defenses, and hybrid healing make the game feel like an endless execution test. Once again, it's not enough to just press your damage and go. It sometimes feels like you need to perform a rocket science, global perfect execution of abilities just for the luxury of burning a defensive cooldown from the enemy team. And this is the reason why warriors have been so dominant in this entire expansion, because they add more obstacles to your kill setups with intervene, disarm, rallying cry, and so on. Moving away from gameplay a bit, the conversation touched on PvP systems as a whole. It should come as no surprise that one of the topics that was discussed was the gearing system. This is something that we know the PvP community would like to change and is easily one of the most frustrating parts of Shadowlands so far. It is no surprise by now that being undergeared is absolutely awful in Shadowlands. It is almost impossible to have a good experience in Arena if you are a fresh alt late into a season because you will be so infinitely far behind and will get crushed by geared opponents. It even became a bit of a meme in a recent dev interview where the lead game designer suggested that it is mostly just player skill and not item level differences that cause the perception of power differences between players. Polinka seemed to suggest they are looking at solutions to make the conquest catch up better, but wouldn't commit to a massive overhaul to the gearing process. Smart for us to totally undercut the, the power progression of, of characters um, in, in, in such a way. Um, uh, I, I think there, it's still important for players to feel like they have to earn the gear on the characters and those characters progress and become more powerful. But here is something that both devs seem to ignore. That gear is just one part of character development and there are several more grinds that are gatekeeping new characters from competition. Being a fresh 60 also means not having max renown or conduits. It means that you are probably behind on Torghast grinding, and you don't have all the legendaries needed for Arena. And if you manage to hit 60 after a weekly reset, and your best legendary is from a world boss spawn that happened last week, you are out of luck, and will need to wait four whole weeks until you can get your legendary again. And I can't tell you how depressing that feels. All in all, the gearing system is probably the biggest issue right now in PvP, because it affects everyone. Both BlizzCon champions and players who just picked up the game are at a massive competitive disadvantage the moment their character hits 60. And we know that WoW is an MMORPG and that progression is important, but the best competition can only happen when there is a more even playing field. In order to attract new players and keep PvP alive, we need more than flashy AWC trailers. We need a system designed to make competition more accessible for players who simply want to grind their skill and develop their talent without needing to invest hundreds of hours into character development. Malinka also addressed the recent ladder inactivity, which was by far the biggest elephant in the room. Here's his explanation. See, like every season plays out in, in certain phases, like season launches, everybody's like gearing up mm -hmm. for the first like 10 weeks, 12 weeks or so, uh, and, and that can be all very exciting and you're getting gear and then everybody's got their gear and things kind of settle in to kind of this state. Um, for a while and then end of season comes around like the last month or so and then it's like okay we've got a rally. And even though he was right that activity usually starts out strong and dips in late season, Shadowlands Season 1 is a massive exception to this rule, with nearly 70% of the top 5,000 players not playing a single arena game in the last 30 days. Ever since March there has been a gradual decline of arena activity, sometimes dipping below 1,000 daily 3v3 games played globally in recent weeks. So what happened in March that caused this inactivity? A few forum posts might reveal the answers. In mid-March, some players noticed that their 3v3 MMR seemed lower than usual. A blue post response mentioned that 2v2 ratings were lower than expected at this point in the season, and as a solution, 2v2 inflation would be buffed a bit while 3v3 inflation was going to be toned down. And as people at the top of the 3v3 ladder noticed that their point gains were getting smaller and smaller, many of them decided to stop queuing. And once that happened, people below them had less opponents to queue into, so they stopped queuing. 
and this problem gradually found itself creeping down the ladder. The total effect of this mid-season inflation reset is that average ratings have gone down compared to BFA Season 4. On average, arena ratings are 250 points lower than what they were last season. In a way, it's as if there are these massive rating traffic jams. It started with a crash at the top of the ladder, preventing players from reaching their rating destination of 2700, which caused a jam at people trying to get 2400 rating, all the way down to 1800 and 1400 benchmarks. Fortunately, it seems like there will be a solution to this problem next season, with Holinka mentioning higher inflation overall. Um, I think we can be more aggressive with our inflation um, numbers um, for, for next season than we are right now. That might mean some higher ratings than uh, towards the end of the season than people are accustomed to seeing. Um, but in general, that will put more pressure on people to uh, play more frequently okay. if they want to preserve it. One potential solution to general game inactivity is a solo queue system, which we covered in a full-length podcast with other community members. Holinka mentioned that they see some problems with the solo queue system, specifically as it can give some players unlucky queues. Okay, yeah, so one guy <laughs> gets, uh, or, or gal gets Rogue Guardian Druid. Rogue Rogue Guardian Druid. <laughs> oh, okay, I other, understand. I understand. And the other one gets RMP, right? Okay, and they're okay. both equal rating. And, and then all of a sudden you're saying like, uh, well, you know, this sucks because this wasn't really a true test of our skill. It was, you know, the matchmaker, you know, screwing up yeah. and, and hosing me. But as Venruki would point out, for every one bad comp you get, you will probably get one good comp too. And I think this too is one of the appeals of a solo queue system, that sometimes you get comps that you have never even played before. That can be fun and interesting in itself, especially if you're earning rewards for your character. Right now, the only solo queue system are skirmishes, which give you a pathetic 15 conquests per day for your first win. If there was a way to spend time actually developing your character's skill and rating by yourself, I'm fairly confident it would be popular, especially considering every other Blizzard game has some solo queue system. Even playing by yourself feels much better than not having anyone to play with at all. Speaking personally, it's hard to avoid criticizing Shadowlands, especially since it has so much potential. We tried to keep this video as honest as possible by reflecting the views of the community at large. We know that there are a lot of opinions from the community that sometimes don't align with the vision of the developers, but communication is the only bridge we have between player and game designer, and any communication helps. As always, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to let us know and give your comments for what you think about this PvP discussion. If you want to stay up to date on all future uploads, be sure to subscribe, especially since we will be giving huge 9.1 updates when the patch goes live.